Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Delta Hawk to unveil early bird engine by program. Flybotics is unveiling a flying saucer drone. And the original RV5 is coming to Oshkosh. Happy Friday and welcome to the show. I'm Sophie Herlock. U.S. developer and manufacturer of a new generation of jet fuel general aviation engines, Delta Hawk, is implementing an early bird engine by program. Experimental aircraft owners can get a DHK 180 horsepower engine, engine monitoring package, and complete installation kit for their specific airplane model for a total of $89,900. Plus, by placing an order during the AirVenture Early Bird Show special time frame, aircraft owners pay only $5,000 at signing. But you better act quick. This special is only available from July 21st to August 12th. The engine cowl will be custom painted to match aircraft color as close as reasonably possible. And yes, it includes a constant speed propeller with propeller governor and engine monitoring package. All installation labor is included, but does not include air aircraft fuel system modifications, such as fuel cap for jet fuel or fuel return lines if required. The engine is currently installed in a Cirrus SR20 at the Delta Hawk booth number 177 at AirVenture, where pilot-led engineering team members will be available to answer questions. We'll be right back with Around the Patch after these messages. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Today is a new dawn. With a new name. Un nuevo logotipo. A new factor. And a global focus. We are Continental Aerospace Technologies, and we stand behind you. Welcome back. Let's take a quick look at some interesting stories coming out of the aviation industry in today's trip around the patch. EAA Lifetime 16,556 and Warbirds 261, Bill Harrison passed away back on June 24th. Harrison was a longtime member of EAA Warbirds of America who had a lasting impact on the Warbirds community over decades of involvement with the organization. Back in 1983, he generously donated EAA's B-17 aluminum overcast to the organization. Ten D-Day Squadron aircraft will travel to Oshkosh, Wisconsin to participate in AirVenture next week. Last month, the squadron crossed the Atlantic with 15 C-47 and DC-3 aircraft, completing paratrooper drops and a presidential flyover while participating in events including the 75th anniversary of the Normandy landings, the 70th anniversary of the Berlin airlift, and multiple commemorations in the United States and Europe. Trent McBride of EAA Chapter 1218 in Willow Springs, Missouri passed his private pilot check ride, becoming the first of the Ray Scholars to accomplish this goal. Trent was awarded his EAA Ray Aviation Scholarship in March and has been working towards his certificate under the instruction of Mike and James Enos. Trent graduated high school this spring and will be pursuing a career in aviation while attending College of the Ozarks and playing basketball. 
A law firm has filed a civil racketeer influence and corrupt organization suit and consumer fraud class action lawsuit against Southwest Airlines and Boeing on behalf of individuals who purchased tickets for air travel in the wake of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 crashes. The lawsuit alleges Boeing and Southwest worked together to conceal the MAX 8's defect, claiming Southwest sold tickets on its airline knowing about this defect, and both companies remained silent about problems with the aircraft while publicly touting its safety. We'll be right back with the rest of the news. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. The Sling 2, a modern, economical flight training airplane for today's pilots. 120 knot crews, sporty handling, sliding bubble canopy, modern glass panel, and dependable Rotax power. Available in LSA or kit versions. Check it out at AirplaneFactory.com. Researchers at Flybotics are working on a new type of drone that could lead to a substantial increase in flight time. Rather than four or more small rotors, the Flybotics drone has only two larger rotors, one on top of the other, rotating in opposite directions and enclosed in a full shroud. The theory is reducing the number of rotors places less strain on the aircraft's batteries. The cowling increases the aircraft's aerodynamic property, which adds to the energy savings. Such designs have been tried before, but they have been difficult to control. Flybotics says it has solved that problem using a simple algorithm-powered stabilization system that automatically determines how much to offset the speed and pitch of each rotor, which makes the aircraft operate similarly to a quadcopter. On the drone's development, lead Flybotics researcher Samir Buabdallah said, This drone is being developed for the industrial inspection use case, especially for oil and gas plants. However, this technology can also be used in other uh, applications like uh, public safety, law enforcement, and generally uh, all applications where miniaturization of drones is necessary. The original RV-5, which is in the midst of a restoration being carried out by Vans aircraft employees, with the help of EAA Chapter 105, will be on display at AirVenture. Plenty of RV aircraft will be in attendance, but this will be the only RV-5, as only one has ever been built. Designed by Richard Van Grunsven in the mid-1970s as an investigatory conceptual design intended to address a number of issues, including the fuel crisis at the time. The RV-5 was built by the local community, including members of Chapter 105. The RV-5 is extremely light, weighing just 315 pounds, including the engine and its mid-wing configuration makes it unique compared to Van's commercial line of aircraft. The ultimate goal of the restoration is to get the aircraft airworthy and flying again for the first time in decades, although it will not fly at Oshkosh. If you're interested in seeing the RV-5, stop by the Van's aircraft booth located in the home-built aircraft display area. You can learn more about the airplane during a home-built review presentation scheduled for Thursday the 25th at 10 a.m. across from the Home Builders headquarters. And that's it for this week everyone. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe, tweet, and like us. Have a wonderful weekend and don't forget to tune in next week to Aero News Network's unparalleled coverage of Oshkosh 2019.